Hey, Room 21 Rockstars, welcome to our Native Americans social studies review video tonight. Um, I'm really just going to work a lot tonight on a couple areas that I really feel that we need to strengthen because I um, honestly, I feel like you guys are really ready for this assessment on Wednesday. Um, but a couple things that you can do at home that will help you to study this and further your knowledge. Number one would be thinking about the theories of how the early people got to North America. There are really three of them. So what I want you to do right now is grab a sheet of paper, a pizza box, the back of a cereal box, anything that you can write on, okay? And divide it into thirds like I did right on my page. Okay, now what I want you to do is, first of all, write down the three theories of how archaeologists and Native Americans believe the first people arrived here. Okay, so the first theory, everyone, is the land bridge, right, during the Ice Age. Think about our song, Earth Was a Giant Fridge. The second theory is Cactus Hill. And the third theory is simply the Native Americans were here. Okay, so I labeled those across the top. Those are my three theories. It's really important that you know those, okay? Now, the next thing that I would do is, before you look in your book or before I tell you anything, I think it would be um, to the best of your um, studying if you just wrote down everything you can think of for each of these three theories, okay? So write down, it can just be a bulleted list, everything you can think of for the land bridge theory everything you can think of for the Cactus Hill theory, and everything you can think of for the natives were here. Okay, what, how is this theory? How did it come about? What did archaeologists or Native, Native Americans find to support this theory? Write down all those things right now. I'm going to do the same. Okay, so compare your list with mine. Here's what I have, guys. For the first one, for the land bridge theory, I simply wrote down that there was an I the Ice Age. It was toward the end of the Ice Age, so that land bridge still existed. And I'll draw you a map real quick. Here was North America. Okay, and that land bridge was up here. So the land bridge theory simply states that Archaeologists believe that the first inhabitants of North America came across the land bridge, and we're the whole way over here. Okay, so Ice Age, it was ending, but there was still a land bridge. Folks came over, and they came from Russia to Alaska. Now, another theory is actually um, the Cactus Hill theory. So, archaeologists actually found a 15,000-year-old artifact in southern Virginia, right here in our state. And they believe that, and if you recall, I'll draw what it was. It was actually a stone-carved spearhead, okay? And it was carved from stone, and that's how they were able to date it, 15,000 years old. So archaeologists believe that it was a campsite for hunters, okay? And the final theory is that the natives were just here. The Native Americans say their ancestors have been here for all of time, so... They really don't know what archaeologists are talking about. Now, the point that I want to hammer home tonight that is so important to keep in mind right now, guys, is the fact that these are all theories. One hasn't proven the other one wrong. We still cannot, archaeologists still cannot decide what the truth is. They're all theories, okay? So one is not the, the best theory to go with. They all have some credibility. They all have evidence. And they're just three things that we think may have happened to bring those first inhabitants here. So, once again, we have the Land Bridge, we have Cactus Hill, and we just have simply the Native Americans say that they were here. Their ancestors have been here for all of time. Okay, so those are the three theories. Make sure you write those down, think about them a lot. The major point you want to take away from here, though, is even though... Some of the oldest artifacts have been found in Cactus Hill. That doesn't prove the land bridge theory wrong. Okay, it's simply another theory. Okay, so three.
theories of how the first inhabitants made it to North America. Really important. Okay, so that's the first study tool that will be really great for you. Next, just grab another sheet of paper, maybe uh, another pizza box or something else if you've been eating a lot of pizza, I guess. Um, cereal box, write on anything that you possibly can. Okay, as long as it's not the wall because I do not want your parents to be mad at Mr. Reichert. <laughs> so um, the next thing I sh actually want to talk about is archaeology and what it's all about. So first of all, I want you to think in your mind, what is archaeology? Just think about it for a second. What is archaeology? Think about it. Yeah, it's a study of cultures and the way that people have live their behavior okay so the study of cultures and the behavior of a certain people okay so archaeologists have to go down into the ground to find artifacts which are things that people have left behind from the past materials that people have left behind from the past so imagine for a second that this is the ground here's mr record standing up here go ahead and draw this and here is the ground okay so i'm an archaeologist standing here on top of the ground what artifacts are going to be oldest? So I'm actually going to label A, B, and C. So if I'm an archaeologist, am, are the oldest artifacts going to be the oldest in A, B, or C? Think about it for a second. Right, they're going to be the oldest down in C because they've been in the ground longer. So remember how we talked about how we said the first one in is the last one out. That's kind of the rule of thumb for archaeologists. So the first artifact in, which would be down here in C, is the last one out. Practice talking about what that quote means. The first one in is the last one out. You can practice it in front of a mirror, you can practice it in front of your dog, in front of your cat, in front of your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your grandma, grandpa, uncle, anyone. Practice talking about that a little bit, okay? So, archaeology, study of human cultures, human behavior, and artifacts are things that people have left behind from the past. And they help us to find out about the past, because think about it, 15,000 years ago, the history books were not really around, so we have to look in the ground for some answers. Okay, so, so far, we have the three theories for... Um, how early people got to North America, and we have a little bit about archaeology, the theory about the first one is the last one out, archaeologists. If you're still confused about this, rewind the video right now, and then we're going to move on a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I actually want to work on would be resources. So grab another sheet of paper divided into thirds. I'm going to do that right now. Now, we have three types of resources. You've been learning about these since second grade. We have natural human, and capital, okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm a visual learner as well as a kinesthetic and musical learner, as you guys know, so I'm going to draw a picture just to help me with that, so a natural resource, remember nature, I'm just going to draw a plant, that helps me remember that that type of resource comes from nature, okay, humans do not make it, a human resource is simply a job, okay, so I'm going to draw Mr. Reichard with his tie teaching students. And it's an awful picture, but you're going to have to bear with me, guys. There's Mr. Riker, that's a human resource. And then we have a capital resource, which is simply a tool. So I'm gonna draw a hammer, if I can. Once again, bear with me. Okay, so a human, uh, capital resource is a tool, something that we use to create um, different resources, okay? So the Native Americans, as you know, and as we've been talking about for the last week, had to adapt to the environment that they were living in. Because if you think about it, the Iroquois lived in a different environment than the Lakota and the Pueblo and the Kakiotl and the Inuit. They all lived in different environments. The land, the geography was different around them. So how did they adapt to that environment is a major question. And we have the three types of resources, okay? So they all had different things they had to do and go about and help themselves with. So now with this chart, I'm just going to name off some resources. And I want you to write them down where you think they go. Don't worry about spelling. Um, just write them down quickly, okay? So the first one I actually want you to write down is corn. Natural, human, or capital resource. Okay, I'm not going to show you till the end. 
what we have. Just go ahead and record them. The next resource I have is actually a hunter. The next resource is, um, we talked about way back, it's called a weir, and it's actually a net that helps to catch fish in a stream. A weir. Okay. Another natural re. Oh, I can't. Okay, I'm not going to give you that one. I was going to say a tree. You can go, everybody can write that down, natural resource. We know that comes from nature. Okay, here's another one. Let's go with a fish. Natural, human, or capital resource. Okay, how about a spear? Okay, let's try the bow and arrow. Natural, capital, or human resource. Let's try a farmer. And let's go with one more, just to make sure we understand the differences between each of these resources. Let's go with a net. Okay, guys, so here's my list. Compare it with yours to see how you're doing. Let me back it up a little bit there for you. So we have natural resource. I have corn, tree, and fish. Those are things that all come from nature. Human resource, I have a hunter and a farmer. Okay, those are jobs that humans have to in order to create resources. And finally, I have the capital resources. We have a weir, which was that net um, that actually goes in the water. If you look back in your social studies book, um, on the page that talks about natural capital and human resources in, in lesson one, there's actually a picture of a weir. There's a spear, a bow and arrow, and a net. Those are all tools that help us to help humans in some way, shape, or form. So we have natural, human, and capital resources. Okay, and I would actually encourage you, bear with me really quickly, if you're still confused about that, to go back to page 62 and 63 in your book, because this is the day that we had our campfire and we talked about the natural capital and human resources, okay? And I think we actually put a page into our social studies interactive notebook. So that will help you a little bit more. But this page was really great. And if you look right here, here is a weir. Okay, right there, if you're still confused about what that is. Okay, so moving on from the theory, um, the resources, I actually want to talk a little bit. Actually, the biggest portion of this, guys, as you know, are the five tribes. Now, a couple different ways I would use to study with this. I have my lyric page from the Native American song. You guys know, as well as I do, that all the lyrics in here have... A lot of the important information you're going to need, such as the Eastern Woodlands, Iroquois, hey! Long houses were the home of choice. Many trees, fishermen, three sisters, corn, bean, squash. Okay, so if you actually look at the song, sing it. Sing it to the mirror, sing it to somebody at home, sing it to a cat, a dog, a lizard, a gecko, a fish, or simply the wall. Anything, that's the number one thing I would actually use to study the five tribes. Now, we took that quick quiz today that... Um, I had you check and you were able to take home, being able to identify where the five tribes are actually located. So I'm just going to take a sheet of paper, and you know that Mr. Riker is not the best artist, but I'm going to quickly draw something that looks a little bit like North America. Okay, so here's my North America. I'm going to star where we're at here in Virginia. Okay, just a rough drawing of North America. doesn't have to be anything pretty. Now label on that map the five tribes and where they're located. Now remember, tribes are different than the regions, okay? A couple of you today labeled, for instance, the Iroquois tribe as Eastern Woodlands. Remember, that was a region, the tribe was were the Iroquois. Okay, so go ahead and label the Iroquois, the Lakota, the Pueblo, the Kakioto, and the, and the Inuit. I'm gonna do the same thing as you're doing that. Take a little bit more time. If you get these right, Mr. Records is going to put on a turkey hat. Okay, guys. So, here's what I have. Check out my map. Compare it to yours. So, I have North America. Okay. 
And as you can see here, I have, let's put my finger over here, the Iroquois, those are the eastern woodlands. The Lakota, those are the Great Plains. The Pueblo, those are the southwest. The Pacific Northwest are the Kakiutl. And the Inuit are up here in the Arctic, okay? So it's also important to be able to say, hey, the Southwest Native Americans are the Pueblo, okay? Or the Iroquois are the Eastern Woodlands, okay? So this is step one, simply identifying where they were located in North America. Now, because we know the eight regions, you should be able to, in your mind, say, I know the geography of this area is like this. So what I want you to do next and as you know, the map that is located in your book is probably the best resource that we've been creating over the last few days. In your Social Studies Interactive Notebook, it has everything you need to know about each of these tribes and a color-coded map that we've been creating over the last week. Okay, so the Eastern Woodland, you, the major things you need to make sure you can tell me about each tribe are the geography of their area, the climate of their area, remember the weather over a long period of time, and how they adapted to their environment. Okay, so if I said, how did the Iroquois adapt to their environment? Well, I know that the Eastern Woodlands region that had the Iroquois tribe was heavily wooded. Okay, it's where we live. Many streams, kind of mountains. Okay, so how did they adapt to their environment? Well, they fished, or they were fishing in the streams. They used canoes that they hollowed out from trees. They were farming the three sisters, corns, beans, squash. And they were hunting small game, things like deer and, and pheasants and turkeys and things like that. Okay, So that's how they adapted to their environment. Now that's dramatically different than, say, the southwest Native Americans in the desert, in the basin and range. I mean, think about the Pueblo. They had to adapt to their environment by building adobe houses, which kept the inside of their homes cool in the summer in the very hot summer heat because remember the climate of the southwest is really warm in the day and really cold at night. Okay, and they had to irrigate. They had to pump the water in with buffalo bones to water their crops. They grew corns, beans, and squash, but they had to irrigate it. Okay, so that's one of the major things. Be able to say, hey, the Kakiutl adapted to their environment by doing this. The Inuit adapted to their environment by doing this. So think about the geography, think about the climate, and how did they survive? This map in your interactive notebook is really the key to everything. Okay, It has every last thing you need to know about each of the tribes. Something else I would do at home right now to help you with each of these is, and I would actually just probably use the map that you just created, Iroquois, Lakota, Pueblo, Kakiutl, and Inuit, I would just take another color, or it could be the same pencil or whatever you're using, and actually write beneath each of these um, Native American tribes things you know about them. Okay, we kind of did that today with the geography. So think about, you know, different things that you know about the Iroquois. Okay, different things you know about the Lakota. Or maybe draw a picture if you're a visual learner. Okay, so maybe with the Lakota, I'll draw a teepee. Maybe with the Pueblo, I'll draw the adobe apartment-looking buildings with ladders, okay? Maybe with the Kakiudo, I'll draw those rectangular structures, and I'll draw a totem pole, because I know that they created totem poles to tell about their ancestors' past. Or the Inuit, maybe I'll draw an igloo. And the Iroquois, I'm going to draw that longhouse. Okay, and remember, they were surrounded by palisades because they were kind of paranoid that somebody was going to come and attack them. So they created a maze to get into their settlement. So that's how quick it can be, guys. Draw the crops that they grew, if they grew crops. Remember, the Inuit, not an ounce of farming was found, as our song says. Or, yeah, maybe they hunted. Maybe they, how did they, what type of clothing did they wear? What type of shelter did they live in? What was the climate like? The weather over a long period of time. So with the Kakiutl, you know, I'm going to draw a bunch of raindrops because I know that it rained a ton there, which created these giant redwood trees. Okay, so we have a ton of rain and the giant redwood trees. Okay, the Lakota, I'm probably going to draw that buffalo because he was a big deal for the Lakota people. Okay. Remember how the Lakota were nomadic, meaning they moved. They were like nomads. Okay, they moved frequently, as our song says, because they had to follow the buffalo. So that's why they built the teepees, because they could take it down quickly, take it with them, and set up shop somewhere else. The Pueblo, the Iroquois, they were more permanent settlements. 
okay? So what I want you to do is actually take this map, okay, draw as much as you can around the five tribes, everything you can possibly remember. You, the tribe that you're working on with your claymation right now will be your strongest, so you're probably not going to have to spend much time with that one because you're masters with that tribe. You do want to spend a lot of time on the other four that you weren't mastering in so much. Okay, tomorrow in class I'm actually going to give you some cards that you're going to put into your um, social studies interactive notebook that you'll see here. You're going to cut these apart and you'll be able to match them to these different areas. So let's just do a little bit of it right now. I'm going to call out a characteristic of one of the five tribes. Tell me what tribe it is. Okay, so dry grasslands. What Native American tribe would that be? Think about it. Right, the Lakota. They lived on the Great Plains. We have dry grasslands. It was pretty flat, not many trees. Think about the picture today on VoiceThread. There was one tree in that entire field with all those teepees and buffalo. Okay, try this one. These folks hunted caribou. Okay, they also hunted walruses and some, some, some whales. Who would this be? They hunted caribou. That's the key. They did not do any farming. They were the Inuit, right. Okay. They had, I mean, the growing season in the Arctic is only a few months, so they really didn't have time to plant any crops, so they depended on hunting and gathering um, for most of the things that they did. How about these folks used longhouses as their home of choice? Who would that be? Right, those are the Iroquois, okay. How about it is hot during the day, desert areas, and they were bordering cliffs. What would that describe? Right, the Pueblo, okay. And remember, their name actually came from the Spanish, as we learned in that video the other day. Okay. How about these folks had clay apartment-type buildings, Right, those were the Pueblo. And remember, they built their homes on top of one another because it was so much better to protect that um, tribe from intruders um, because they especially had a lot of people that were coming after them. And remember, the Pueblo actually did hunt the buffalo as well, but not as much. They also were farmers. Um, the Lakota were mainly dependent totally on the buffalo. And how about these folks hunted and fished whales? Okay, off the coast in the Pacific Ocean. They hunted salmon and some other fish, and they also gathered a lot of berries and nuts and things like that. Right, those are the kakiyudo. Okay, so those are the type of questions you want to ask yourself. Now, as I told you today in class, one final study that will be really great for you, and you can earn yourself four house points if you complete it. And remember, the answer key is on our webpage. Uh, starting on page 100 is a review for Unit 2 that the book provides, and it's really in line with some of the things you have to work on. It has some diagrams, some maps, another great way to practice studying. So if you bring this in completed, you'll get four house points. And for watching this video right now, I feel like I'm in a commercial to sell you something, but for watching this video right now, and if you bring in all of the work that you worked on, you can get another three house points for um, studying using this video. Okay. One final thing I'm just going to quickly show you and I'm going to take you away from me and I'm going to show you um, a little bit of the screen is I would log on to VoiceThread again and go through those pictures. That's a, such a great way to actually um, study the tribe. Just flash that picture up and make an inference and say, okay, this is that tribe because I know this and because I see this. Okay. Think about that picture that Elijah pointed out to us today of the Pueblo. It looked like an Iroquois village, but there were cacti in the background, and they were actually irrigating. Okay, that was such a great picture and such a great catch by Elijah. Those would be pictures that, you know, you could pick up any time. And I'm also going to show you Fling the Teacher again, which is on our webpage. It's another great game to play to practice this. Okay, so, so long for me in person, and now I'm going to switch you over to my voice. See you tomorrow. Okay, guys, so a couple things I'm going to quickly show you. Number one, you can log on to VoiceThread. Here it is. Here's our VoiceThread that we looked at today. And the pictures that are on here are so great to study the five Native American tribes. And you're practicing our reading comprehension skill of inferencing. So look at these pictures and say to yourself, what is 
what Native American tribe would this be based on what I know? And especially look at the picture I'm showing right now on the screen because this is the picture of the Pueblo irrigating crops because in the background you can see the cacti. It's a huge picture. Okay, so go through each of these pictures and say, okay, this is this area, this would be this Native American tribe, and why. The reasoning why is the most important part, guys. Another thing I'm going to take you over to is actually the Kate Waller Barrett website, Best Classes, 5th Grade, Mr. Records, Rockstars, you guys know the drill. And then if you come down here to under Class News, it says Native American Fling the Teacher, and here is that game. You guys are familiar with Fling the teacher, we played it back when we were studying the eight geographic regions. So it's really great because it says, which is the only tribe that did not use plants and natural fibers for their clothing? And you can go on and on and on. And it works exactly with what we are, what you're responsible for on the social studies assessment on Wednesday. So this marks the end of the study video. If you have any questions, talk to me in class. Remember, you get three house points if you turn in all of the work that you um worked on during this study video and make sure and that's your little prize for watching this video i'll see you guys tomorrow i'm very proud of your effective effort and good luck in your studying